Well, the Hospice Society, basically, they are kind of like our, in the background, our backbone. They provide the extra funding that we may not necessarily have, so they provide the comfort items that patients in the hospice palliative care service really require. You know, I've had patients in the community who are allowed to stay in their homes simply because hospice palliative care puts supports in the home. Um, we have a program called Noel Nursing, which is nursing at the end of life. And so do you know that many times patients are, are wanting to stay home, but because of the demands on their family caregivers, it really is causing them a problem. And most unexpected admissions to either an acute care hospital bed or to the palliative care unit occur because of family and caregiver burnout. So if we can support these needs, particularly overnight respite, it makes a huge difference to the family and, and especially to the patient who stated that they want to be at home to die. And so without our support and putting those uh, overnight caregivers in, I don't think these patients would have been able to achieve the, the death in the home that they had actually wished for. They provide equipment loans that they normally wouldn't be able to have if they're unable to pay for medications or um, certain extra things like dressings, then they actually provide that as well. They also help with the volunteer service and they let they train and put the volunteers out in the hospital and soon in the community. So that's an extra service that not everybody has and it's the extra little bonus that we get. The Hospice Palliative Care Society also provides all the education for the nurses and the physicians working in the palliative care service. So we're very fortunate that we're able to go to every conference that there is so that we're always updated on the most up-to-date treatments and, you know, services available to our clients. So the people in Cape Breton, they're getting everything that's the best and up-to-date just like everybody else in the country, which I think is wonderful. It's, it's an amazing partnership that they have with our unit and our service. If they didn't exist, our patients would not have the benefits that they do. The Oncala unit at Palliative Care was decorated by the Hospice Palliative Care Associ uh, Society. Um, and it's, it's beautiful. It feels like home for patients at end of life or even suffering with uh, with uh, intolerable symptoms. It's, it means a lot to have a home environment with the kitchen, the volunteers are there, the volunteers through hospice, they bake, they, they do all those extra special things for, for, for the patients, the families, and for the staff. There are many things that we can help with. And so if there are some uh, financial obligations that the family just can't meet, and it is jeopardizing the health and the well-being of themselves as well as the care of their loved one in their final days, that's a role that we feel as a society we should, should fulfill. So I hope that that gives you an idea of the breadth of the services that we provide. And I think something that I always like to talk about is that, you know, in palliative care, we talk about not being able sometimes to add days to someone's life, but we certainly strive to add life to somebody's days. And so when you're diagnosed with a life-limiting illness, it's all about living those days the best way you can.